Now, we talked about Hermes as being Thoth, Hermes Trismegistus, passing on the Hermetic principles. Now, science has agreed with many of these, and with Nassim Haramein's theory, they agree with principle one as well, and there's seven of them. So principle one is the principle of mentalism. The all is mind, the universe is mental. So what this says is that energy in our material universe is made of spirit, and spirit, or the all, is unknowable and undefinable, but can be considered an infinite living mind. And because of that, everything exists within the mind of the all as a mental projection. Therefore, energy, force, and matter are all subordinate to mastery of mind. And that's why we go in instead of trying to conquer out. <laughs> Just so you know, when I was studying these, I would have to take a nap after like trying to study these. So I know it can be a lot of information. So principle two, the principle of correspondence, as above, so below, as below, so above. So this embodies the truth that there is correspondence between the laws and phenomenon of the various planes of being and life. And just as man uses the principles of geometry to calculate star movements and distances while seated in his observatory, this allows man to intelligently reason from the known to the unknown. And he says, study the nomad, understand the archangel. I've spent a lot of time thinking about that last part too. <laughs> uh, principle three is principle of vibration. Nothing rests, everything moves, everything vibrates. So energy, matter, mind, and spirit all vibrate. S pure spirit is vibrating at such an intense speed and infinite rate of rapidity that it appears to be at rest, just as a moving wheel appears to be motionless. On the other end of the spectrum is gross matter which is vibrating so slowly that it appears to be at rest. And there are millions upon millions of varying degrees between those two. Now, the planes of energy and force vibrate, the spiritual planes vibrate, and the mental planes vibrate. And the vibration of your mental body determines the mental plane that you can perceive. And that's what raising your vibration is to help perceive these higher planes. Principle four, the principle of polarity. So everything is dual, everything has poles, everything has its pair of opposites. Opposites are identical in nature, but different in, to, in degree. Extremes meet and all paradoxes may be reconciled. So this says that everything has two poles or opposite aspects. But opposites are extremes of the same thing with varying degrees between them. So if you look at a thermometer and you try and find where hot begins and cold ends, there is no defined line. It's actually determined by your perspective. So hot and cold to us is a manifestation of what we call temperature. And it's simply a different form, rate, and variety of vibration. It's just a different vibration. Now the mental planes vibrate as well, and it, we have poles that exist in the same way. And if we take love and hate, for example, they seem to be completely opposites, but towards the middle we have like and dislike. And sometimes we aren't even sure what we feel. The reason this part is taught is when you can identify the emotion you're feeling and understand that you're just on the same scale of a positive emotion, you can flip yourself to that. And that is part of mental alchemy, learning to control yourself mentally. <laughs> Only a few more. So the principle of rhythm so everything flows out and in, everything has its tide, tides, all things rise and fall, the pendulum swing manifests in all things, 
The measure of the swing to the left is the measure of the swing to the right because rhythm compensates. So this states that there is an ebb and flow between the two poles described in the principle of polarity. There, there's always an action and a reaction, a rising and a sinking, and this is true in all affairs of the universe, of suns, of worlds, men, animal, mind, matter, and energy. Everything has its ebb and flow. This is true in the creation and destruction of worlds, the rise and fall of nations, the life of all things, and in the mental states of man. You know, that's kind of a mouthful. But um, someone who practices the Hermetic principles has often be, been referred to as a Hermetist. So essentially what that is is using these to understand the self better. And the principle of rhythm is understanding that when you're flowing, you will ebb. And the further you understand yourself, the more you understand when you're going to ebb, and you can rest at the point of neutrality instead of going into your ebb f fully. So you can't completely negate your ebb, but you can compensate it to a certain degree. Principle six, principle of cause and effect. Every cause has its effect. Every effect has its cause. Everything happens according to law. Chance is but a name for law unrecognized. There are many planes of causation, but nothing escapes the law. So there's no such thing as chance. There are many planes of cause and effect, and the higher dominate the lower, but nothing can escape the law. So again, referring to a Hermetist, what they learn to do is mentally rise above the normal plane of cause and effect to not they what they do is they cause on the higher planes to affect the lower planes the ordinary plane of cause and effect so they are not just the affected but they are the causers and i don't have a formula for it <laughs> at the moment but it's part of learning i guess uh, the principle of gender. Gender is in everything. Everything has its masculine and feminine principles, and gender manifests on all planes. So no creation, mental, physical, or spiritual, can exist without these two principles. And every one and everything contain these two elements. And I think a simple acknowledgement of that, we, we hear about toxic masculinity, and if people just understood we had both aspects of ourselves, mm -hmm. they could come into balance within themselves. You can't be on an extreme. Or I guess you can, but... <laughs>